Hi, it's Mr. Baumgarten coming right at you. I thought today I might try a bit of a different video and conduct an experiment of creating a platform style game, Mario kind of thing, uh, from beginning all the way to end. Now, my student introduction booklets have a fairly simple little platformer for you to build. But we all know that platformer games are much more than this. Uh, they, the levels are long and the whole background of the screen scrolls past as, the, our, as our player keeps moving through the level. And how would we go about building something like that with Python? So today I thought, let's start from the very beginning, go all the way through to the end, and see if it doesn't help you as you create your projects for me in my classes, or just for your own personal fun. So what I'm going to do is I've got a whole pile of A3 sheets here uh, taped together on the table. And I downloaded a grid paper um, template off the web. And so there's five millimeter hash marks all across this. And so I'm gonna basically treat my screen on my computer when I build it in Python later on. I'm thinking the equivalent of 10 centimeters by 10 centimeters of the page. And so that will be what we will see on the screen at any one point. And as our player moves along, we'll see the different parts of the platform. So whether we jump up to some higher platforms or we fall down to some lower platforms. And so we move through this and we'll, there'll be something at the end for us to reach. And our player has reached the end of the level. And of course you can design a second and third level if you want to as well. I think we'll just stick with one for now. So without any further ado, let's get started. After about an hour and a half of drawing, this was what I ended up with. This is the platform level that I'm planning on making with my platforms, some fire pits, walls uh, for you to bounce off, and of course plenty of coins for you to collect, work your way to the end and reach the door to win. All in all, it was five A3 sheets of paper. And if I zoom in all the way, you can see that I've gone through for every single platform and worked out the coordinate position of the top left corner of each rectangle and then the length uh, or height of each rectangle. And I've just assumed that they're going to be one centimeter uh, in height if I have my label or one centimeter wide uh, where I've got the height. So I've gone through and worked out the positions for everything. And then comes the fun part of typing all that up without making too many mistakes along the way. So I opened up my PyCharms and I created a blank file called Levels. And all I've done here is created a Python list uh, which contains lists. So if I had, say, a new thing, um, plants, that I wanted to put in here. So I've got an empty list, and then inside this list, I've put, I'm um, creating a list of four values, uh, basically to represent the four values of the rectangle. So the X position, the Y position of the top left corner, the width, and the height. And then the comma, and then I'll put in the next one. And the next one, and the next one, and the next one. All right, so you can see here that I've measured out my total scene as being 1710 millimeters wide by 400 deep. Uh, I do recommend you work in millimeters rather than centimeters, so I added an extra zero to everything. It makes it uh, a lot easier when we actually get into the coding side of things. It gives it more accuracy to work with. So here are all my platforms, and then here are my fire pits the walls that I bounce against, and then I also added all my coins. And then you can see there's a stack of those to collect. And finally, I also added a list with, uh, so to just keep using the same method. So I put in the goal, uh, so the doorway at the end, this is where it will be located. And by keeping it the same method means I can basically use the same code that will render it and detect this collision. 
So I've put all that into a nice separate file, called it levels, and then I started building my game. And this one hasn't uh, zoomed in. And increase the font size on this so you can see what's going on. Okay, so the first thing is I have installed or imported my Pi game and I've imported levels, which is this file here. In hindsight, I probably should have called it scene. I went for levels because I was thinking, oh, I could have multiple levels, blah, blah, blah. At the moment, obviously, I've only created the one level. If you want to create multiple levels, by all means, feel free. So my usual stuff here for initializing Pi game, and then you'll see uh, some new things here. I've got scale equals four and convert grid to pixels. So what I, uh, I'll come back to that, uh, but it's a function that basically turns this from uh, millimeters into pixels. That's that's what it does. Uh, and then I've got my, again, my usual, so I'm declaring a couple of fonts, some colors. So I've got here the colors for all the platforms, the coins, uh, the lava or fire pits. And I started messing around with adding sounds and then decided, you know what, I'm gonna leave that for you to play with yourself. Uh, create the rectangle for the player and then offset and centering. Now what these two are, um, because we are wanting to have Because we're wanting our game screen to just occupy part of, of our scene at a time. So maybe this is what we see and our player is standing here, but we know that there's all this wider world in this scene. And so offset is the variable that I'm using to say, all right, so from, oh, there's the table, I was standing on top of. Uh, so from the top left corner of my entire world that I've created here, how far across do I want to be showing the screen? And then how, how far down do I want to be showing the screen? So if the player is standing here, uh, then I might need to be scroll, I may need to scroll across this far. Uh, and so I'm, I'm using offset to define where I'm drawing my window. And then centering is simply where the player is gonna be. So I've created a 500 by 500 game and so I want the top left corner of my player sprite uh, to start at 255 and to finish at or, uh, X of 255, Y of 300. And so that's where my player will sit. And then uh, some things that you tend to usually expect for moving, moving games, platform games, and the other games we've made, we've got some booleans that indicate whether we're moving left or right and some speed variables and some variables to control whether we're jumping or we're on the ground and whatnot. Uh, our events stuff, this is all pretty standard. Uh, moving left is true, moving right is false when you hit the left key, and then it's the other way around when you hit the right key, and if you let go of either of them, it turns off the respective left or right. If you press up, if you're on the ground, then it'll let you jump. If you're not on the ground, then you can't jump because you can't start a jump when you're in there. We're gonna reset the screen, paint everything black, and draw everything as we go. So if we're moving left, our player, uh, so our player is a rectangle object. Uh, and so with that, I'm getting the X and the Y position of the rectangle, and I am subtracting horizontal speed from it or adding horizontal speed to it, depending on whether I'm moving left or right. Uh, the same for jumping. Uh, and then here I calculate the offset. So from the center position where I want my player to be, add the X or Y coordinate of where my player rectangle is and multiply it by the scale. So the scale is basically saying, yeah, taking this, um, so PyCharms will treat this as pixels by default, except I want it to be millimeters. So I'm basically saying, look, for every one that I've got here, make it four pixels. So that's what this scale variable is doing. And so I can actually change that and resize my game uh, later on and I'll, and I'll demonstrate that. I've got a print statement here, which is just printing out a whole bunch of data that uh, was helping me error check as I was writing this up. And then drawing all my platforms and lava and walls and coins and the endpoint has exactly the same code. 
I'm simply drawing rectangles or ellipses on the window using the appropriate color and calling that function that I wrote that I uh, explained earlier that basically converts these millimeters into pixels and returns a rectangle object. All right, it returns a rectangle object. And so here I'm just multiplying everything by the scale and I'm using the offset to figure out okay, which part am I actually needing to draw on this part of the screen. Okay, and then uh, the width and the height just need multiplying by the scale straight away. Return it all as a rectangle so that the rectangle and the ellipse commands can actually draw them on the screen. Then I draw my player and I do use the same function uh, to create the rectangle for, for where the player is going to get drawn. And then it's a whole bunch of collision detection. So are we touching a platform? Right. And uh, if we are touching a platform, um, if we weren't on the ground, then we are now. Um, and if we aren't touching a platform, then we're not on the ground. That's what that is doing. Are we touching lava? Again, if we are touching lava, then we are now on the ground and we'll subtract one of our health. So the way I wrote it, you get 10 health, which you go through very quickly, um, given that this loop runs 25 times a second. So you've got about a third of a second to get off of the lava before you're completely dead. If we're touching a wall, then uh, I'm make it so that we bounce off the wall. So if we were moving left, we are now going to automatically start moving in the right direction without pressing the right key. And then the same, if we were moving right, we've hit a wall, we're gonna start bouncing off into the left direction. If we've touched a coin, then we're gonna get the point for uh, grabbing a coin and then we delete that coin so that we don't collect it twice. Uh, if we've reached our goal, then we're now victorious and we'll end the game. If our we run out of health, then we end the game. Put some stats on the screen. All right, so let's uh, display our number of points and our health. So our points is displayed in the green and our health has been displayed in an orange. Put those up on the screen and refresh the screen. Then when we end, uh, uh, we decide, okay, so I'll put in another little uh, mini pie game loop here, which will just finish when we hit the escape key. And all this is doing is saying, okay, it starts off with a, a goodbye message, but then it says, okay, if we ran out of health, okay, that means we, we died. Otherwise, if the victorious uh, boolean is set to true, then that actually means that we won. It'll tell us how many coins we collected and give the message to escape to close. And then we quit, and that is the game. Uh, you will not think in this quick little explanation that it took me about six hours to make, but it did. So it was about an hour and a half of drawing the scene. Uh, it was about half an hour, three quarters of an hour to type out my levels and then coding this up. I had the broad picture in place within an hour and then it was at least a couple of hours of debugging. But all is said and done. Let's take a look and see what we've got, shall we? So I go to run. And here's my 500 by 500 screen, my zero coins collected, my 10 health in the bank, uh, and my up arrow jumps. Uh, I can move left and right. Okay, if I hit the wall, I start bouncing. Okay, and I had to hit the left key to stop racing off in that right hand direction. If I touch the lava, okay, you see that quick little touch knocked me down from 10 health to 7 health. Uh, so I need to jump over the lava some coins along the way. Let's go up where those big pile of coins were. Let's get some of these. You can see that my coin counter is going up. Uh, let's see if I can get the <laughs> hit the end. Yeah, it's probably not likely. I, I know for a fact I don't want to collect those coins because there's a fire pit down there, uh, which I'll just quickly show you here. You can see the fire pit there. And uh, let's go. We've come down, oh, there's another fire pit, avoid that. And oh, down to one health, next touch of the fire pit and I'm gone. And, oh, okay, I don't, <laughs> there you go, I've died. So I hit escape to close. Now, just to show you what this scale thing was doing, if I change this to scale two, you'll see all of a sudden I can see a lot more in my scene at, at once. Right, the whole game is being scaled a lot smaller and I can see much more at once 
which kind of gives some of it away a little bit. You know, it's I kind of think it's part of the fun of the level is not knowing that the first time you play it that you can't go down this hole because there's a fire pit there. And I just I died. <laughs> um, amusingly, you can actually make this less than one. So if I make it 0.4, um, we might even see the whole level in one screen. Not far off of it. So, um, I mean, it's cool to be able to play around with it, but you're not going to. Uh, and by having it, being able to make the scale nice and small like this is actually very useful for debugging your levels program uh, because uh, the first time I typed it up, I certainly didn't have everything in the right spot. There were a few that I typed wrong. And so by being able to zoom right out, I was able to see which ones were wrong and which ones I needed to work on. Let's see if I can actually get to the end. Uh, yeah, maybe not. <laughs> um, anyway, that is my platform game. Have fun making it yourself. Uh, I've got links to uh, information about it on the Python page on my website, pbongarden.com. Hopefully that helps and, uh, you know, certainly adds sprites to it, adds sound effects to it, adds multiple levels to it. Go out and, and make it a real platform again. All right, this is Mr. Baumgarten signing off.